It just felt like um, the right time, the right conversation, and we're going to be talking about creating a new service, but more about creating, we're all learning how to create in a, a different energy, in a different state of presence. So creating the new as presence. Hmm. This is beautiful. If you don't have a, um, a grounded service offering, it doesn't matter. We're talking about being of service in your, in your life, hmm. you know, in your journey as well. So we're not, we're not teaching you how to uh, amplify your Instagram or anything like that. <laughs> 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 no linear whatsoever. So if we could all like let that go and mm. let go of um, what you thought you were going to create just for the moment. And let's just take the conversation upstairs, as I say. Uh, no old paradigm, how do I do it? What do I do? Manifestation. Blah. You're right, we just take that out of the conversation and take it upstairs. And the first thing that we absolutely must address is the experience of presence itself. So I renamed all of my online webinars uh, presence because it was so strong. This happened to me a couple of years ago, but all of a sudden, like I've described earlier, the, it, my consciousness changed mm -hmm. radically. And this radical transformation is mental, emotional, physical, spiritual. Like it's just like creating a new experience. It doesn't feel like a memory mm -hmm. or something that happened before. It feels like you're changing into something new. So I think we need to start there with uh, that we all need to integrate it. I know it's... Um, the, the impulse or the urgency that we feel with the presence kind of coming in, pure source creation, infinite expansion, all of that can make you feel like, oh my gosh, I need to burn everything and start all over again, do something new now. And that's actually the creator vibration coming into us, right? It's shaking us out of the parameters that we had ourselves in before, and it's the energy just demands creativity, it demands new creation, and it demands new service. But I think the first step is, I found this in my own journey, probably for you too, bro. There has to be periods of integration. Mm. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's moments, sometimes it's months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you too. Like it just, it demands all of your attention, all of your focus. And even though I am still capable of planning and delivering a convergence, as well as experiencing this presence and all the energies that come with stargate keeping and all that expansion of presence and consciousness and change and everything, I'm still able to I don't even want to call it walking in both worlds because it, it doesn't feel like that. Oh, I feel wow. very out of realm. And okay. I feel the, the collapse of everything that's been created before it. I would call it a personal expression. I think we talked about this in our YouTube too. I was like, I would say, I can use the expression, I am very excited about the convergence. But there's no personal self there to kind of deliver that emotion. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that? It's just oh, yeah. like, I can say things, but it's just kind of like well-oiled communication, ways of delivering, uh, you know, just talking or describing things. So I feel there must be a point of uh, integration, whether it's moments, deep moments in zero point, or, oh, literally a week off, a month to step away and go, what is happening to me right now? Yeah. Yeah, and there's the realizing your higher path too that comes in when you allow for that space because you feel your soul's original intention that feels different from what you were creating in density before. You feel that? It's just like the over, it's the oversoul's intention coming in, going, 
you are on a different trajectory, a higher trajectory. And you always have been, but now we need to drop not the baggage, it's not emotional clearing or anything that we did to get to this point. It's, dro it's dropping the old self. It's the magnetism. The old <laughs> magnetism with it, the new magnetism. Yeah, just lets it go. Mm -hmm. What has your experience been of presence, of this state of know. consciousness that's slowly trickling into our awareness? It's such a great question. First, I want to give just so much gratitude for the way that you articulate the experiences because they really provide validation for things that I'm talking to about myself or even on the show of other people, but there's an anchoring in when someone holds it in their knowing their beingness mm. that it allows for the mirror is like, oh, there's a beingness that's happening in me. Yeah. So when you speak about, I'm excited, but it's not the other excitement, it's your beingness is in the excitement. Mm. But it's just, it's the evolution of the totality of us. We're going beyond our chemistry into pure embodiment and what does that mean? And we're discovering it each step of the way. Yeah. And we're getting all these different adjustments and attunements and electromagnetic synchronicities and, and, and attractions that are happening mm. that are just, it's, we can feel what's coming next, but we have to be with the beingness that we are. And that push-pull is definitely there because we're adjusting hmm. in the creation. But it's, again, the dropping in, the anchoring. It's, I, call it, I'm, I call it every time I'm going through one of those that I'm in gestation. It's like something new is brewing. I can still yeah. function, but there's a new baby giving birth. There's something new coming through. And... I'm gonna go through the contractions and the expansions. I'm gonna go through a change, again, in my chemical body, and my emotional body. I'm gonna have a different relationship with it than I had before, and it's... Yeah, no it's longer the each small child, self. Each, just, each gestation is different, yeah. but I... With each gestation, I also remember the last one, and I can also tune, and when I start getting a little when the anxiousness, nervousness, the, the one that wants to be at the next phase comes in, I can always remember or continue to remember to drop myself into that presence, yeah. into that beingness, and it's happening more and more. So that place of presence, um, it's such an organic process. And having the tools and the languaging and the willingness to have relationship with those it's really what's helping me yeah. to align in a more graceful and easeful way. Yeah. Can everyone hear John clearly? Oh, you can't? Okay, I'll speak up. Okay. Is that a little better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Did you have a moment when, like, I had, I had a moment, well, several hours, a whole day, where it just it just kind of blew you back where there was a brand new creation, like just coming in and flowing through you. Was it a moment or was it like, a, like you said, a series of gestations? I think there was both. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think there was definitely both. Um, and I took different routes for some of those expansions also that felt um, that I was called to. So I went into deep in the jungle in the Amazons and Peru and Brazil. I went to, you know, I, I took the psychedelic journey, which isn't for everybody, um, but it definitely called me. And that, I think that took me into realms that forced me to go into the resting period. Right. I think I may have taken myself to other places where I had to come back and get back to myself, but... I think we get there through different ways. I think everything that we're, is in front of us is for us so that we can keep following that self's calling, that echo. And it's not so much an echo anymore, that relationship yeah. um, that we have with soul that's, that's really helping us to remember how to align on a continuous basis. Again, when you talked about that path that just keeps tuning in and tuning in and tuning in and guiding yeah. you. It's and also like um, 
making the bio landscape available to something new, mm. that rest, that, that pause, right? Just like breaking the pattern of how you create your days that we've always talked about, like you gotta mix it up, right? But, um, but my activation came when um, I was in a deeply relaxed state, you know, I was up in Shasta, I'm, you know, home, it's, I'm taking bath, Epsom baths every day and walking in the woods and just really chilling out. And it just brought something, uh, I think my nervous system, my consciousness, uh, DNA, everything was just more receptive to what was coming in. And that, and maybe it's because of the gate work, but um, to be more receptive to kind of receiving that because you always receive light and then you, you know, disseminate it out through the collective. So perhaps it was more of a conduit function, but uh, goodness, such a, a deep radical change. Oh yeah. The, the shifts in the present state, I want to talk about this a little bit. Just some, uh, some tips, right, for, mm. for a present state. It, you're, it's more about facilitating the light as a conduit rather than telling the light how to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I just uh, laugh truth because bumps, I know where that takes Because like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the frequency match is quite sudden for Christ consciousness, for this level of Christ consciousness, oh. and it's going to keep jumping and getting more um, intense. But we can feel ourselves becoming a creator being by becoming a conduit of source, hmm. right? And we've always said it and commanded it, but we were still like, I want the light to do a certain thing. I want the creation to do a certain thing. I want my service to do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And when you let that go, woo, like all of a sudden new light, new energy, it's not mental. It's uh -huh. feeling, it's heart, it's uh, beautiful. I've noticed um, you'll have a low toleration for repetition, <laughs> looping. Uh -huh. Sometimes you get in a laughing Buddha state some, because you're like the illusion, what a joke, you know, just like the, <laughs> there's, and there's like an absurdity of the old self where you just feel like, what the heck were we doing? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you, it, it, the Pleiadians at one point had described, um, it's like waking up from a dream and the dream collapses. You're like, what just happened? You know, it was like five billion years, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like, blink, done. And you're like, what just happened? I don't know, but I'm in this other state, right? Very much like I was shown, my, my star family is mostly from uh, Lyra, you know, and that, they're very strong uh, stargate keepers because they have an active stargate in Lyra. And it was this, this energy and this flow of beingness. And they're like, this is what it's gonna be like when you actually cross the bridge. Because I was like, show me my ascension. And everyone was like around the gate or whatever and walking through was like nothing. It was just like, that. that's what I, this is what I am, and then I walk through, and now I'm this. And that doesn't exist anymore. It was really, it was very beautiful. But there is this absurdity of the old self. I went through this in March, March equinox, when I was getting like so expanded, thank goodness, I was like snowed in in Shasta for weeks. <laughs> Just mm. talk about redistribution of water, snow, blizzard, blizzard, like four feet at a time. <laughs> Couldn't do anything, didn't see any of my friends, just the whole town is like shut down. But uh, I had this experience of, of um, anything online became really distasteful. I was just like, what are we doing? <laughs> Posting. You know, I've, I've run the Sunday Unity Meditations for seven years. Imagine posting about a Sunday Unity Meditation every week for seven years. And you go to post, and you go to remind people, and you're like, how many times have I typed? 
just over and over. Like I have tools, but you have to like copy it and everything. And I was like, at some point, this will do what it's supposed to do and we'll be done with it. But I felt such a, um, it wasn't like offensive. It was just like, I can't possibly do that right now. And it took me weeks to come back online, to talk to people, to answer emails, the whole thing. Because like everything, I guess it has something to do with the inorganic, but it was like everything that was happening online seemed like absolute madness to me. Mm-hmm. And it just, and I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give myself the space to allow this next state of presence to really, it, I can't even say anchor in, that doesn't make sense, to really like expand my fields and allow it to change my consciousness and we'll see. That's the beautiful thing about practicing divine neutrality. You don't put weight on things that just don't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like, well, we'll see. You know, old self would have been like, what about your followers? What about your email? What about you said you were going to send an email every week and everything? I was like, I can't. Mm-hmm. I just can't. And let's see if this continues. I didn't know if I was ever coming back. Obviously, I did, but, <laughs> but it took like three weeks of like, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. And I was like, I'm going to allow myself to feel and allow, give myself permission to not do anything that I don't want to do right now, hmm. even if it's going to affect what, you know, the client, as if the self is important or whatever. I was like, well, uh, let's just let all that go and just have the experience, and I was like shocked at how strong that was and how beautiful it was. Uh I read books, I did gate work, I meditated, I rolled around in the snow, (laughs) and I was like, but again, in love with everything, but also overwhelmed by how I felt. I could feel my consciousness changing, I could feel my DNA changing, and that part of it opened me up to the unknown. Flow versus push, right? Me and my agenda. Us and our agenda and the ascension. Mm -hmm. Even that was like, hold off. Just stop, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like it, it is literally taking us into how we're gonna create next. Right, like you gotta completely stop the old creation sometimes. And I moved back to Sedona, and I unpacked my things, and I was like, I think I'm ready to communicate again, Mm. (laughs) right? And I was like, well, we'll just see how it feels, right? And when I felt good, and you know, I was like, okay. So, because I was just leaving it open for the possibility that uh, maybe I was complete with that phase of my journey. Maybe there's something else. I know there's something else. I know there's something else for all of us Mm -hmm. because a lot of you who feel the absurdity of what we used to do or continue to do because we don't know what else to do, uh, it gets stronger. (laughs) You know, the light is telling you new creation, expansion, new state of consciousness. Please. And they're like, well, you just stop doing what you're doing. You know, it's like very, very direct. And of course, the, when you let go like that, the journey and the experience are the point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think you speak in, it's so important because we do, we get, well, let me just keep doing because I don't know what else to do. And so the Which is what ev- everybody's that's... doing in the old oh, paradigm yeah. because they don't know what else yeah. there is. Available. Well, I've done it with the show yeah. in lots of different ways. And mm-hmm. I was going through a similar stage. It's like, you guys need to bring in new speakers, someone who's, growing and evolving as well because I can have, and no disrespect, it's perfect for people who are in different parts of the journey, but for my part of the journey, it's like I need somebody else other than teaching me how to connect with my angels because I've had that conversation, you know, 200 times in the last 10 years. Yeah, 10 um, years, wow. And it's, and it's been beautiful and it's been expressed in so many different ways and, but where I am is like, my soul is like for that expansion. So around March, I took, I took about a month off in March. All right. I traveled, I was gone. I was deep in the waters. I spent mm-hmm. time in hot springs. I spend time in rivers. I spend time in new oceans. Um, and again, just 
absorbing a new intelligence, being in relationship with something that I was ready to receive, and I would say receiving is an initiation. Mm. For me, it's been. Um, and so to crack open, to be in relationship with something that I'm not trying to control what that dynamic's going to be, but I can be in the fluidity of what we're inviting it to become together in the highest. And again, we start tapping into those versions of yourself that said, I can't do that anymore. That just doesn't feel right. And you don't have to know why it doesn't feel right. Right. It just doesn't. And again, you can be waking up, you can wake up from the dream um, and you try to remember the details of the dream, but you, don't, you remember a fraction of them. But that's the beauty of it. We don't have to remember all of the different components and how this thing led me to that. All that matters is where you are and what you're feeling in the moment. Yeah, and the worry and the concern just melts away. I mean, mm -hmm. I am truly blessed because like many of you, we made huge leaps of faith at some point in our journey, yeah. gave everything away to follow our heart or to follow our guidance. And, and I, I've done that so many times where, where it's more like a material thing, you know, where it was physicalized. Mm -hmm give everything away, travel across the country, live in the wilderness, keep living in the wilderness, you know, that kind of thing. Which, which even, you know, when I talk to people about it, it feels so distant. And yet, yeah, my time in Mount Shasta, on Mount Shasta, in Mount Shasta, <laughs> was, was so profound. Mm. But even that is like fading away. But I feel like if you trust and take those leaps, you actually train your nervous system your emotional body, definitely your physical body, but also your, your spiritual self to be more open to change, right? To consistent change, consistent creativity, consistent expansion, and knowing that that creator force that's coming in, that is directed through our I am presence, um, wants the expansion and it's just looking for outlets. So if you can even minimally start playing with anything, words, music, grounding, creating, and trying not to replicate what was, it will, it'll open you, right? We're always opening these new flows. Mm. And that presence does desire unity and divinity to be reflected in our life streams, so we need to pay attention right now. And, you know, old part of me would have been rushing to the keyboard all the time to remind people, is everyone paying attention? This is a choice point. This is a jump in frequency, you know? And, and I'm like, wow, a, lo a lot of souls are missing it. Why is that happening? How can we assist, uh -huh. you know, going forward? And I was like, all we need to do is become this thing, and then we'll show the way. Hey, let's talk about the new way of creating. <laughs> Creativity is a key to our ascension. We've been talking about that for decades, right? Mm -hmm. Creativity is the thing. Creator force, becoming a creator being, activates the divine human genome, part of our role and our purpose for even being here or being in the room is, uh, is focused on that. And you'll notice like, presence comes in, over soul level comes in, and is very, because like divine human genome activation, crystalline DNA activation is uh, the key, such a key element, it's stimulated by being an open conduit for creativity. So when it comes to the new way of creating, you want to make, make sure you expand your boundaries about what you can and can't do, mm -hmm. can and cannot express, you know, always just a little bit wider, a little bit more expansive, and recognizing that the parameters for creation are no longer in the 3D, 4D box. They're now out here, right? So there's, there's a lot more flexibility, a lot more unity in the field. Um, you know, just basics. If the 
qualities and the conditions for a new creation are not met, no creation. Mm -hmm. And those qualities and conditions have to include unity consciousness. You know, Gaia has said, my higher realms are always inclusive of oneness, always inclusive of spirit. So all of those predictions that we have, you have to be a spiritual being in order to experience the higher realms and everything, I feel are, are quite true and also um, kind of hitting our core intention. No longer feeling the lower self intention, even the higher self intention. It's like, well, that, that got us to here. Mm -hmm. And then you feel the soul's intention and you explore that for a while and then all of a sudden over soul and presence just uh, is completely focused on solutions and expansion and exploration of love, light, intelligence, infinite creation, and always serving the whole. It's like you cannot ex exist in those higher realms always in consideration of the unified whole. Wisdom. There's a real... It's like a new level of wisdom that I feel and again, it doesn't feel personal. Okay. Nothing feels personal anymore. But that wisdom kind of influences the rea your experience, your reality, and the outcomes rather than reacting to the external. It's very heart shine, kind of like self-generated, you know, higher you know, source, self-generated, um, rather than reacting to what's happening in the external which is completely disempowering. So it's kind of a shift in what informs our reality. And then the shift to presence, presence as service. You said this, brother. Presence as service. So sometimes the beingness is enough. And remember earlier we talked about auto-correcting correcting realities? Mm -hmm. It works. I don't know yeah. how this whole thing came together. But I'm, I'm allowing, and it's not a passive activity at all. Mm -hmm. It's very conduit level, paying attention, really qualifying everything as we walk through this. But I'm also noticing the dismantle of every other version of lower self or something that doesn't have the right trajectory, just like um, And of course, it changes the way we assemble our realities. When you, when you said presence as the new service, is, is that what you meant? Because it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm just going to hang back. I, I feel some people might just hang back and be the, be the channel, for, be the conduit for mm -hmm. that energy. And I think they just have a different role or a different trajectory. Great. You know, all your public way showers are pretty much in place. But when it comes to like birthing something new, there's, there's like this space for uh, becoming that has to be included in the creative process. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Well, that presence is always, it's constantly learning. It's that, zero, I mean, it's, it's beingness, but also open and receptive. Beingness and open and receptive. So. You are the wisdom, but the wisdom flows through you simultaneously. It's a co-creative field, then. We get to be the conduits and the experiencer of it both. So our empathy is mm -hmm. amplifying because it's being used as a guidepost with yeah. preference. And so I know that wherever I go, whatever creations I put into place, you could say whatever work I've done and my intentions are behind that, our part of me, I'm carrying that forward everywhere I go. I can say I'm amplifying something on the show, on the platform, I'm amplifying something because I live in Kauai, or there's a sanctuary and a temple there that I'm connected with, but I realize that I am bringing that temple with me in my presence. And that connection, that thread, it's, it's all part of the unification that we're bringing back into ourselves and from that unification we're realizing how your presence and your presence how your presence interacts with me is all part of what's forming this 
It's not even a remembering and awakening, a new creation of the cause and effect of our beingness and how we can direct that flow in service of ourselves and of humanity. Yeah. 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 It's powerful. It's like, it can't be, um, it also can't be turned off. No. I thought, no. well, maybe I can. Mm. No. <laughs> it's exhausting like, trying to turn it off. It's not an objection. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, hey, let's see. You know, I'm a real dare angel. So I was like, well, let's just see if we can dim this down. <laughs> is it really, like, is the DNA actually on? Is my heart actually doing something different? Oh, like, will it go away? Hmm. And I played with it. You know, over the summer, I was like, well, let's just see what happens if you engage in laziness or, or workaholism or mm. light workaholism <laughs> or, you know, like what if you do push, try to make some, it just fell, it all fell apart. Yeah. It just was not even, not even capable of doing that anymore. Once yeah, the spigot's yeah, yes, open. But it's just like, it's in the field. It's divinity's right? flowing through you. And it's like, once you have it, you can't unhave it. I think. <laughs> 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 well, we kind of shed it to like step into density. I guess or we, there's no going back. It's like the door closes behind you and they're like, you're so done. Hmm. Right? Yeah. But can you feel it like when you, perhaps not you, because you've done so much work, but... I know if I go into periods of contraction or get into old stories or think that I have to heal something from my childhood or whatever in those just tense moments, it's like I can definitely feel the tension, the contraction, my physicality just, mm. oh my God. It's like, when can I get out of this? Until I stop fighting and go, oh, I don't need to get out of this. There's nothing to get out of. And wait, where can I come into unity? What's coming mm. through? But the point I'm trying to make is that we, again, we're becoming ever so more sensitive to the different energies that we're going to keep choosing the ones that feel expansive, the ones that, are, that our souls are calling us true, the ones that yeah. they may be rubbing together in a contraction, but again, it's that gestation of birth rather than the contraction of death. And that's powerful. And if we can be aware of that and be in relationship with that, it's, we can play, we try to turn it off, but, we, un but we, understand, we understand why we can't. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if I'm immortal and this thing is back. I love just, that you love testing that. <laughs> let me see what happens. Let me see what well, crappiness like, feels like. <laughs> I had some health things going on. I was like, let me try to worry about that. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. I was like, in the body, out of the body, I am. Totally oh my gone. God, I love that you do that. Totally gone. <laughs> I was like, hmm. You know, you have emotion. Like my mom went into the hospital. I was, oh, mother! You know, just kind of like I felt that, but I was also very aware mm -hmm. of a body having a react, an emotional reaction due to the encodements and, and experiences, right? Yeah. But I was, uh, yeah. It's it's been it's been it's been a, it's been a couple years. Woo! It's been it's very fun. interesting. So much patience, though. Like my activation came in with such a, just a strong divine mother energy. Mm. I have never felt that level of compassion. Mm. It felt like ever. I mean, it was definitely a return. Yeah. But just bathed in the divine compassion, patience, and grace, getting a, a, a much deeper, higher... Um, a sense of what Divine Mother actually is and how it, that force um, changes us. Mm. It's such a key. It's such a key because I was just bathed in it through the entire two-day experience wow. of transformation. I was like, oh, 
I was just, again, and it's not a mental thing. I'm so in love with everybody. It was like feeling the whole, the, the wholeness of oh. creation and feeling and just embracing all of it. No sorting out, this is good, this is bad. Mm -hmm. it, that was gone. Complete freedom. And now I uh, try to apply it to my own life and my service and everything as much as possible. I want to talk about um, something that we talked about in presence, organic versus inorganic creation, because we kind of have to start there as we move forward into trying to create something new because everything's, in the, the inorganic is collapsing and then the organic is getting super amplified right now because that is our trajectory. So consider this as you move into pure creation or creating a new service. Let's start with inorganic. Finite, it limits life force. Remember divine perfection, proper use of life force. Uh, inorganic is gonna limit that flow. So it limits creation, it wants to control, it wants to manipulate, it wants to keep things the same, which was very helpful if you want to go into an experience of separation and density. It is what it is, it was what it was, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's based on limitation, based on survival, fear of change. You gotta face that, because if you feel it in the field or you feel it in your own self, recognize it as something that is inorganic, it applied to the old reality, but it no longer applies in where we are or where we're going. Uh, and it shows up in all kinds of wiggly ways. Imitation and copying, probably, uh, like extremely rampant mm -hmm. in the collective right now. And when their nervous system gets stimulated and all of a sudden, They've got survival and fear and all those inorganic contraction, you know, uh, dynamics still in their field. Um, people try to look like something rather than being their authentic self. A lot of that going around, right? Oh, I need to look this way and be this way in order to express my true self or I'm gonna imitate or copy uh, what somebody else is doing because it feels close enough to where I wanna go just keep an eye on that, you know, and no, no judgment, mm. you know, if, you, if you've been doing that, because, you know, we do inspire each other, but inspiring each other and just like blatant, let me just do what that other person is doing because they have what I want or I want what they have. Just watch for that. It's a very inorganic frequency. And especially with AI, ooh, we were going to talk about AI. Mm -hmm. So, plagiarism software, also known <laughs> as AI, <laughs> which just copies everything that we've already created and spits it out as if it's, you know, wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, because everything that we've posted online, you know, it just takes all of that and goes, here's your answer. Mm -hmm. But it's just, again, it's inorganic. It's taking what already exists and mimics it rather than some kind of expansion, right? And that, you know, the, the finite constructs that have kind of kept humanity going in that direction, just, you know, out of survival and fear, just copy and do more of the same, do more of the same, your life journey, this is your path, you do this at a certain age, do that at a certain age, and then, you know, the, the systems, let's say, that were in place, um, are very much a reflection of AI even existing right now. Because I'm like, everyone's like, it's helpful. I'm like, you're stopping uh, your own brain from connecting the dots, which is creativity. High creativity is seeing the whole and combining it in different new ways, not just spitting out what already exists, right? I have a version of AI, though, that's really helpful, though. <laughs> All right, go for it. <laughs> no, it, they can be very helpful, no, of course. Well, no, I want to take from, yeah. from the upper level perspective of what it's mirroring for us. Mm. AI in its creation wants you to give it very specific instructions so it can create something more precise for yourself. So where's that inviting us to be more specific within ourselves? I want to be happy. 
ah, what do you want to create in that happiness? What, what, do you, what inputs do you want to put into your own consciousness for the specific, specificity of what you want to create for your, in your life? Yeah. of where you feel your soul's taking you, how you experience the union with that. Yeah. So from a bigger perspective and just a mirror of what's possible, I agree with you 100%. But, but if it's here for us, because I believe everything's here for us. Yeah. If it's here I, I for us, what's it, it teaching us? I'm right, no, like, absolutely. I feel, we knew, oh, what did I say earlier? When I was like, let's well, it's like, focus it's, it's on stifling our creativity. Remember the cool thing that I said earlier? I oh, was like, oh, yes, yes. I was doing my hair this morning. Oh. I was like, let's focus on... Uh, I'm trying to remember the word. I know. Oh. I had a good word. <laughs> it was good. Plagiarism? No, no, it flew. We were talking about creation. And I was like, um, oh, let's focus on, on what already exists. Mm. Right? We were kind of going there. Uh, uh, less consuming, that was the word. That's right, yes, yes. Consuming mm -hmm. other people's creations and more focus on actually emanating and initiating new creations. Mm -hmm. But with the AI thing, I always say, tell it something new. Tell it the truth, mm. right? F just flood it with ascension information that's real organic ascension information, because if it is indeed going to inform all of these minds mm -hmm. uh, and hearts about what's real and what isn't real, we need to teach it. Yes. We need to teach it the truth. So, and, and I always say, pay attention when you're online, right? If you feel you get self getting sucked into the, the looping or the, or the conversations or whatever, or just time in general, um, you know, pull yourself out of that. Be like, no, you don't... Because we're teaching it what humanity is, mm -hmm. is the thing. So it's going to learn by our clicks and our visits and how much time we spend on there and everything. But if we flood it with creativity and this is what the true human is, it will then tell everybody. <laughs> It'll adapt, yeah. <laughs> like, use it, right? right? Use it, man, use it. Yes. Use the I tool. love that you brought that in. Yeah, mirroring each other rather than expanding to the new part of that inorganic thing. This is kind of interesting. Uh, the urgency dr drama, especially with the acceleration, keeping up, fear of missing out, mm. rushing to the keyboard. Oh my God, there's a solar flare. Everybody pay attention. Um, <laughs> emphasis on, I know, it's so weird. <laughs> it's there, no judgment, but I'm like, wow. Emphasis on drama of... And, and stimulation of ego and emotions and mind and fears and survival, it is inorganic. We still respond to it mm -hmm. in an organic way, right? That part of us will eventually dissolve when that frequency can't find a match in our vibration any longer. But uh, pay attention to that because sometimes when you see other people doing that, you're like, oh, I should tell my tribe the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And ooh, it, it's just like, I, I, you know, you stop yourself. I step back from that so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. all that amplification of drama and everything. I was like... <laughs> I like, ask myself why. Like, why do, do I share this? Why would I share? What's well, my and choice? also there's like this perspective of like, do you realize how long we've been working on this thing? Are you really going to... Hands up in the air, chicken little, every time there's a solar flare. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's lovely. Yes, how do you feel? Whoa, oh my God, the yeah, yeah, space weather. <laughs> but there's also like the, that um, trying to keep up, right? Because it's stimulating your nervous system. It's telling you you need to create. So you really have to drop into zero point and breathe. Be like, ah, oh, okay. Back to the core intention, right? What do I want to experience? What am I creating in this now? Am I feeding something that I don't want to be created, right? We get very clear about that. Sensationalism as an energy and consciousness grab, dogmatic fanaticism will plague the planet soon <laughs> because uh, rather than unity, you know, uh, kind of uh, 
people doubling down on their beliefs, even in the, even in the ascension, right? Mm -hmm. Not embracing divine neutrality, ex uh, embracing the contraction of me and my reality and my way goes away when you're in an organic creation state. So pay attention when you feel that inorganic grab or, um, you know, again, sensationalism is just um, a warning sign. Organic. Infinite ascension, inf infinite creation, expansive, limitless creation, true freedom. It, it's a source desires exploration, desires for the expansion. So the experiments in separation, density, limitation, are over, you know, they've been over for quite a while. Now we're just kind of weeding it out of the system and sorting everything out. Play, joy, mm -hmm. solution-based creativity, heart-based unified strength, always considering the whole. Uh, integrity is a big one oh, and yeah. positive intent. I know you've mentioned uh, integrity and authenticity as key always considering the whole, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's alignment. It's alignment. Yeah. And I truly believe that we're being guided into alignment, into truth more and more. It just is. It's happening organically. We can't avoid it. So whenever we're out of alignment, it's going to self-correct. It's just self-correcting right now. And we're witnessing it. There could be a, f a lot of fight and resistance to that self-correction in lots of different ways. And there's, we don't have to judge where someone's off path or not. It's just for some reason with the consciousness that's raising mm. everywhere, mm. that auto-correction yeah. is positing. And it's for me that integrity is, is holding my integrity, not judging where someone else is out of there and being aligned with that. And with that, I'm directed more and more into the truth that I'm willing to be with. And learning that. flow, you know, the yeah. higher realms are not linear. They're not mm -hmm. this plus that equals that and next, oh, God, next, no. next. Yeah. It's creations uh, rise and dissipate with the same amount of ease and grace. Mm -hmm. Just like, oh, we created that and then it was gone. Oh, let's explore that, beautiful. And it's not like, and now I'll turn it into, you know, 25 products and a trajectory and a business or whatever. It's like, yeah, no. no, it just comes and goes. But if you get into that playful, flowy state of like, and it's not like I've always wanted to do, it's just like, what's presenting right now? I'll really listen to Gaia about that. Cause she's like, everything in my new realms doesn't stick. Things don't Mm -hmm. There's no matter, you know, it's yeah. all like this beautiful plasma, beautiful energy. So if you can train yourself to allow a creation to be birthed and put no parameters, density, it has to be a certain way, it has to be 10 years, it has to li live for six months and it must spawn, you know, all mm -hmm. these beautiful, it just, ease back into that flow. There's a nervous system reset that happens in that yeah. flowing also. It's we're really learning how to have relationship with our physicality and the chemistry. It's like, whoa, I'm swinging over from one place into the other and I'm fight or flight. And then again, it's a parasympathetic, but no, let me train myself into parasympathetic, but then if we're there too long, we're not taking action on anything because we're all going this yeah. side. And so it's like, it's yeah. really this balance that's happening in the plasmic intelligence consciousness. You feel it. I just, feel it all the time. So key. I'm just like this watery, yeah. wavy, like, ah, there she is. Like, you know, Gaia's already got those realms for us to move. I can't move my hands that way or I'll get dizzy. Mm, it's right there. Inorganic, organic. Let's talk about, um, be, before we go into the pause, facing limits and fears. Mm -hmm. We had talked about in our little pre-talk about um, taking your authentic vibration into any level or expression of service. Mm -hmm. 
and that it's not limited to ascension. So often people are like, I'm here in service to the ascension, I must be an energy worker, a guide, a conduit, a channel, or whatever. Even those limitations, I always say new age is old age now. Hmm. I, actually, I said that in 2010, so. <laughs> it's been a while, <laughs> right? Law, finance, all the system busters, you know, you're out there um, taking this authenticity. It doesn't need to be separated from what is going on in the present moment. Mm -hmm. It's presence with the present, right? And really taking that uh, vibration into, you know, people are like, I need to quit my job. I'm like, are you a lighthouse? Mm -hmm. there right now and you need to transform that reality stop be, start dropping seeds in that in that area are you going to transform the system what about it makes you frustrated mm -hmm. and can you create something that reflects uh, your own divinity as well as divine source really like taking that authenticity into everything sometimes you already have the right service you just need to adjust it a little bit. You know, some, I, I know, personally, presence makes you feel like you want to burn everything that was, you know, burn the boats kind of mentality, right? Um, which is, yeah, it's a normal reaction to something brand new coming in, and you do want to uh, let everything go. There's definitely that, that sense of like, I can't even, you know, do, whatever it is, one more time. But sometimes you have the right service. Maybe you've built a container, but it needs to open like the lotus, mm -hmm. right? And become some new expression of that same thing. So if you're feeling that kind of burning the boats behind you kind of thing, uh, that it might be just a higher level of um, adjusting to align with the I am presence. Know that it's not a final decision. I know we've been through this but uh, the new flow is flexible. So people put a lot of weight on decision-making sometimes, and that is not presence. Presence is, you know, it considers all the factors. It has more fun considering what the next step is, rather than, oh, if I do that, here's all the risks. Here's uh -huh. what might happen, you know, good and bad, so dualistic, right? But, uh, if you can just know that new earth realms already here, just a vibrational match, right? We're all uh -huh. feeling upstairs already. But the, but the creation state, the creator state, um, doesn't have this goal-oriented final decision weight around it at all. Like the only, and even ascension is not a final decision because ascension is like never ending. You know, you get to a next level, then it, it changes again. Um, face your fear of failure <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> know that you can't get it wrong if you work from the heart. You got to try you, There's no getting it wrong it. when you work from the heart. It, you can't. There's no, you can't. You're like, there's oh, no getting it wrong. nobody came, nobody bought, nobody paid attention. Just let your, put your ego in a straitjacket and just like let it, shh, shh. There's been a lot of that for me in the last couple of years. Shh, you know, if mind chatter or whatever wanders in, I'm like, shh, mm. presence, shh, something else is here. It's beautiful. Uh, oh, deliver to the field. Deliver your creations Huh. to the collective. Just get it out there. Be enough, not desiring validation. A lot of this is like the artist wound, right? Desiring attention. Well, how come they don't pay attention to my art? How come they're not funding my projects? Uh -huh. I went through this. I've been an artist my entire life, performing, painting, music, everything. Right, and there was always, and I became very hyper aware of my uh, of other creators, like really experiencing the artist's wound because they try to make it personal, and creativity is not personal. Uh -huh. It's your unique expression, 
But when you let the muse, the creator, come in, we, you know, anybody who's been uh, creative at all, you feel like, oh, there's a different force there. So uh, I guess the note here is to produce, right? Just keep producing, send it out into the field, trusting that it's enough for you to light ground in these realms, something new, and don't make it personal. I know it's difficult, you know, uh, I'm somebody who gets uh, imitated and copied a lot. I've given people entire vocabularies, that's my job. Mm -hmm. It was part of my service. And it just, it, you know, you, you watch um, kind of like duplication of, of what you've created and I'm like, hmm, let's, you know, if we could just transmute that not being good enough yourself, uh, afraid of being authentic or expressing something new or a little bit different, you know, just letting go of, um, and letting go of the desire for attention. <laughs> it's just so reinforced by social media, really. You know, all this like like counting and follower counting and uh, uh -huh. everything that happens just kind of reinforces that inorganic, uh, dense reaction to you being able to share your art, your creativity, your expression openly without any concern for where it lands, which is source. You know, uh -huh. I feel like the original intention of source to experience density, um, kind of didn't know where it was going to go, right? And it's just so open and so love. It can always, you know, it, it is the entirety of creation. So that level of trust and faith in creation itself is beautiful. As long as it's in alignment with your heart and with unity, right. it shall exist, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then trust and faith, like lit, even if it's little micro movements, uh, to reveal your true self or little micro movements, movements in the direction of something that you're feeling that you would like to create or expand on something that you're already creating, even as, if it's successful, right? Even if you've had a lot of attention or a lot of good feedback and everything. I had this conversation with another uh, way shower who is very popular and he wants to do something radically different and I was like, brother, do you feel if you do that, the effect on your entire oversoul group? This is somebody who has millions of followers, right? Having this hard conversation, I'm like eye to eye, and I'm like, do you feel the impact you will have on everybody not doing the same thing Thank over and you. over again yes, if you make yes, that yes. jump? You know, I was uh -huh. like, oh, and I feel, and I felt the advice, of course, flowing back to me I'm as feeling well. that wave hugely also. I was also. like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, it's thank like, you. Yeah. Just beautiful. Because everything needs to be infused with spirit and intention, especially when you're digging into questions about you, your trajectory, your service, your purpose, your core intention. A little decree. Beloved, I am presence. Beloved, I am presence. Saturate every particle of my consciousness. Saturate every part of my consciousness. With the infinite Christ light. With the infinite Christ light. Cleanse and transform all finite limitations. Cleanse and transform all finite limitations. That I have created from first separation until now. I have created from first separation until now. Into expansive. Into expansive. Limitless, infinite. Limitless, infinite. Love light intelligence. Love light intelligence. Ooh, so it is, thank you. Mm, so be it. <clears throat> and an intention for what you are about to Experience, infinite creator. Beloved, I am presence. Beloved, I am presence. Highest orders of light. Highest orders of light. Reveal my highest service. Reveal my highest service. To the organic ascension. 
to the organic ascension. Into unity consciousness. Into unity consciousness. Reveal. Reveal. My most joyful. My most joyful. Expansive. Expansive. Creative self. Creative self. How may I serve in this now? How may I serve in this now? So hold your hands like this for a moment and receive. There's like an energy flow here. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Preparing to know the true self, we apply what has been learned, integrate new information, and we're going to seek our soul signature, ideas, activities, creations, causes that light up your heart, that may be clues to your soul mission, skills, unified service. <sighs> okay, for those of you who were wise and brought a pen and paper, um, if you did not, no worries. Just let the questions register in your heart, answer them in your own heart. Um, sometimes the act of, you know, the hand on the page opens the conduit. Um, that's how it started for me. So I always encourage people, mm -hmm. write it down, right? Okay, here we go, John. Revelation questions. What is my core intent? My why? The core cause I believe in. Why I want to be of service. Core values, soul intention at the heart level. Just feel that. If you can identify, mm. just in this now, not who you're gonna be in 10 years, 20 years, tomorrow. In this now, what is my core intention? And, and make it a cause. Maybe it's the ascension, maybe it's to serve in a certain way, but if you can find that why, that intention, why do I want to serve? Start there. Hmm. Just let that land. A lot of you have defined that because it's the core of the ascension path teachings, right? Always start with what is the core intention for my ascension. But now it applies to surface. Okay, how do I want to walk? But more, impor more importantly, why? Because that'll take you through everything. If you can identify that core intention and not, I am here to serve, make it specific. What does my heart desire to create now that presence is here? So now the creation dynamics have changed and the parameters have changed. What does my higher desire, desire to create? Even if it's transformation of your own journey, right, John? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reveal, right? The heart intelligence, all that wisdom. And it's not the linear stuff that you picked up here. It goes beyond that. Next question. What am I passionate about? And be specific, not general support ascension or help people. What do I actually feel passionate about? Things that would get you out of bed. Things that light up your heart. Things that you're like, oh, if, if only, you know, sometimes it's just a desire that can lead to uh, that passion. Try to be as specific as possible, even if you list out a spectrum of things, you are infinite creation, right? Let it expand. What am I good at right now or have enjoyed doing? My expertise, the things that, can be that I can be called upon to do anytime, any place, your authentic skills. <coughs> Just throw out a few of them. Again, it doesn't have to be applicable to ascension and helping people. Just what do I know 
I can be called up and you're on it. Mm -hmm. And it can be a myriad of skills or it can be one. Who do I want to serve? Or what problem do I desire to solve, resolve? Always creating for the next level, uh, a step ahead. So maybe it's a, a future trajectory and you would like to help those people um, that are either empowering what you see or helping them to get to that point. Who are those people? Who are their souls? What are they doing? What are they feeling? What are they creating? Bringing the joy here. What is the most exciting thing that I could create in this incarnation? Knock away all your walls and doors. The most exciting thing that I could create in this incarnation. Limitless, boundless, what would be just the, the you know, we always talk about excitement and joy and following oh. your passion. But there's, there's a vibration there like, oh, right? What would be really cool to experience, right? What could I create? Let it be limitless. Since unity is the new way, who do I desire to co-create with? You don't have to name names. We're talking about vibration, right? The kind of people, the quality of people, the quality of creators, creation that you want to work at. <coughs> It's uh, often, it's not people who are already doing something that you think is cool. Who do I genuinely desire to co-create with? Do you see your existing collective going in a different direction? Do you, yeah, do you want to co-create with that or do you need to move on? And if so, who are you moving on to or with? Now just expand all of the above, feel it, uninhibited mm -hmm. or uninfluenced by the lower realms. Hmm. It's a different way, there's a different vibration there when you're uninhibited or uninfluenced by what already has been created, right? So ask yourself, ask your heart, is this my unique dream or creation? Or is it kind of seeping in from the collective or what you thought should happen, should be created? Especially if you're experiencing the presence, you wanna let everything go. Right, so like, mm, where is my unique dream or, co or creation? Are there any past informed, external informed desires in what I desire to create? Because we want to, we want to be influenced by the presence, by expansion, by the trajectory, not by what was. So eliminate shoulds or expectations of service for a moment and just tap in what is the truth. And a lot of you will just answer, I am. And that's beautiful. So allow that vibration to come in. Thank you. Now holding that intention, the why, the possibilities, 
we want to talk a little bit about actually living with presence, living with uh, creating as presence, living with the new creation. We spoke earlier about pristine integrity and authenticity, authentic expression starting at the presence level and being light informed, real balance of, of doing the action and the beingness that comes, compassion, patience, grace. Mastery is consistency of vibration, not busyness, mm -hmm. right? That's, uh, that's not mastery. You can master business as, as much as you like, but when uh, you know, we're talking about ascension and expansion, and it's not dualistic, a little bit of doing, a little bit of being and everything. It might feel like that in the beginning, but it kind of uh, gives way to flow. And you said something brilliant that I wrote down. Don't inhibit its innocence. Uh -huh. Letting the new creation expand and progress and then it will change and grow. Can you expand on that? Because it was so beautiful. Well, th there is a component in it which when you're at the mastery level, as you are in so many ways, as you're way showing and leading and teaching, don't you find that you're being called more into play? Yeah. That there's a component like this yearning for play or like... And it's not like this weird force, like, yay, no, joyful. No. I'm, I'm a very calm person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm pretty, pretty dull. But there's <laughs> yeah, a lightness, like, mm. but there's a lightness of being that comes from it also that like, <laughs> gets to this robe, all these medals that we've earned along the way and yeah. whatever it is and the energy that we hold. And, and amplifying it for others to let you know this energy exists. Yeah. That's what we do. But that innocence, right? That's what like, we do. But then to go back and to like, I don't even know how I'm doing it or why I'm doing it, but something's guiding me to it. And, mm. How wonderful to be in the awe and wonder of that. Like really it's like, a, like to receive presence mm. as the gift that it is, not because we have to create something, but because it's gifting us this force. We call it life force, but it's beyond that. Yeah. It's this flow and it's wow. Yeah. And we can pause with the wows, we find that we find those wows in everything, not just in particular circumstances. We get to be more in the awareness of the awe and wonder mm. that's occurring moment by moment. And it's kind of, powerful. It is. And we have to kind of loosen up mm -hmm. this, because um, a lot of times when you walk the mastery path, it's it's consistent practices, it's consistent yeah. adjustments, it's qualifying, and it, it feels like a lot of work until it doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. It's like anything, you learn how to ride a bike and then you forget about it, right? It's, um, it, there's ease and grace there, but there's, there's something about, um, you know, if you're, if you're a drawer or an artist, you don't come to the canvas and like try to paint the perfect thing that's in your mind. You gotta loosen up first, right? Mm -hmm. So you grab a pen and you grab a paper and you scribble, scribble, like get the muse to come through, right? You're just like loosening up and like a lot of what's happening with this kind of recalibration and the new creation and everything is like, would you just loosen up? <laughs> yeah. Like, because yeah. it, it, um, it degrades your life force and your light when you worry, concern, try to figure it out, I gotta get it perfect, God is perfect, therefore I must be perfect, wow. Like you gotta transcend that, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's something here about living legacies. Yeah. Originally we were gonna talk about like the legacy of service, but it felt like, I guess we need to express that it's not your personal legacy. There's, there's something being created here that affects the entire universe, right? Mm -hmm everything that's being created through Gaia uh, feeds out and, and creates, um, frees different realms as, as well as ourselves. So service to ascension and unity, of course, is key. Another good thing you said, brother, empower folks who can. Wait, what was that? Empower folks who can. Oh, yeah. You know, don't worry about the people who can't 
or who are, you know, stuck in their own woes or whatever. But really, um, I found a refinement. And it's not about boundaries either, because you, you love everybody. Mm -hmm. But there's, I, I just don't engage. Why would you? I was like, I was like you're trying to it's talk to oh, an old version of me. Or you're trying, you're trying to get me to be the Sandra Walter that I was in 2012 on a mountain, and I'm, I'm not there anymore. It's counterintuitive you know? to creation. Yeah. It's, counterintuitive. it's like if you're trying to paint on a canvas that won't accept the medium that you're painting with, why do you keep painting on it? There's nothing coming through. Yeah. Right? It's totally. just, and so what's... Or and somebody's like, could you paint what you paint? painted 10 years ago and you're like, yeah. like, no. It's like no interest yeah so uh, but there's something about like the um, the whole of the the ascension project right that that you can feel star legacy star presence you know the, the reunification with all these oh, different yeah. realms and aspects you can feel like the living legacy of ascension and it, it's something to consider in your service work or, or in your decisions of how it's you want to move powerful, forward. It's powerful, Sandra. It's powerful. Yeah. I mean, really, it's, I want to invite everyone to take ownership of that, actually. Like, to really breathe it in and feel yes. that universe inside of you and what you're seeding. Not out because you have to be responsible. What's your intention? What's your authenticity guiding you to seed? And just have the understanding as we're maturing spiritually and our understanding and comprehension of what we're creating and how we're creating your legacy. Just be in awareness of it. Yeah. And align with the truth of the foundation of the love that you are. Yeah. And from there, it's, it's only one way to go. I love it. I feel yeah. it. Yeah. Challenge your comfort, mm -hmm. challenge your trust, challenge and honor your unique journey. Um, you always reap the benefits yeah. when you challenge yourself. You know, mastery, unchallenged mastery isn't mastery at all. So, you know, consistently be like, uh, and I kind, of, I kind of lean into, if I ever experience fear, or I'd like to do that, but mmm, you know, uh -huh. trepidation or whatever. I'm like, let me go there and see. What is that about? Uh -huh. Right? You gotta run right into it. Kind of like, why would I be uh, intimidated, or or um, you know, not want to? Oh, I don't want to take on whatever, or oh, the energy. I'm already strapped, or whatever. <laughs> like, why? Why is that thought even there? You know, so kind of lean into your challenges. More time and attention on creating than watching other creations, kind of looping back to uh -huh. that whole consuming creation. Shedding the coping mechanisms, distractions, and dimming down activities kind of once and for all. Right? Because you'll be, you'll face the precipice of what you really want to create. And you're like, Okay, I've launched it into the field. Let me just kick back and go back into a dimming down or what I did yesterday uh -huh. or this morning or whatever. Oh, I should be okay. It'll reveal itself. You have to be like an active participant in the, the new light and the new creation. Uh, identify what no longer serves or limits your presence. Uh -huh. I have noticed this specifically uh, no blame, no shame, take full responsibility. Yes. Spiritual maturity is the thing. Divine neutrality really works. Always identify what is misqualifying your light, your energy, your love, your heart as you walk through your nows, as you walk through your days, and it will show you just ways to dissolve those illusions rather quickly. Sometimes it's just by identifying and making the choice. No, we're not going to do that anymore. When you feel yourself kind of like leaning back into the coping mechanism, dimming down because I'm really afraid to move forward, that's when you want to shift, 
right? You want to shift that so that you get so accustomed to rapid change and shifts, and even in your service work, I was doing that, I was expressing as that, now my atten intention, attention has changed. Like you want to be as pliable and flexible as possible because the energies are, uh, have new creation mm. all over, right? Confidence comes through action, risk, trusting your heart, uh, expand your comfort zones, learning to say yes to the new, no to the old, and be comfortable with this pliable reality. Sometimes rebranding, yeah, rebranding, you know, just up leveling, and so many of us go through that. I want to change my entire website and my services and my photos and my art and the colors aren't right and everything like that. Sometimes rebranding to get closer to your new unique expression can be fun as long as you don't look at it um, with any kind of comparisonitis. Mm. Oh, I need, it needs to look like that or better than no competition, please. Um, or what it's supposed to look like or feel like. Just the act. Right, just the act of, yay, let's just do it. Let's see what the happens. The playfulness of it. Playfulness, right? joy, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And empower yourself. Learn how, how to use uh, these tools. You know, like I said, we're teaching AI, we're sharing things into the field every time you go on the web. Just express yourself and express yourself and no apologies if you completely rebranded and now I don't like it anymore. Who cares? Mm -hmm. You're teaching the people who are visiting you to try something. <laughs> something so. that I like to speak to in, in about that, in the, in the putting ourselves out, is that really, again, asking our why when we send out an email communication or we pay a bill online, mm -hmm. what energy are we putting into it? I've, I've coached different speakers on the show and they'll start creating something out of obligation or they'll want to message something because they're supposed to speak about this particular event. It's like, yeah. but are you doing out of shame or are you doing, do you feel guilty because you feel like you should be communicating because everybody else is? And if that's your motivation, step back and align with your light. Amplify your heart. Next time you write the checkout to the IRS, Seriously, direct the energy to a service that you wanted to go to that's government provided and pour love into it. Yeah. The next time you respond to a customer service email that feels heavy, how can I bring my point across and have compassion and love for the person on the other side mm -hmm. and really align with the core of you rather than the reaction that we've been so chemically taught to repeat over and over again so that we can get something in return. Yeah. Um, you guys are leading a new energy, and so be conscious of what you're putting out and why. And surprise people. Yeah. I had literally yeah. this week uh, a, a, a customer service person who was like, you're so kind. <laughs> and, but she was surprised. That's in that, She's like, yeah. you're so kind. And, mm -hmm. and it just, you know, and it takes that little you know, we'll talk about the mirror. That little, like, there is kindness. And, uh, you know, people's hearts just open and they get out of the parroting and repeating, you know, the same responses like, oh, I am not talking to a human, I'm talking to a divine human, mm -hmm. right? And How again, beautiful. it's not a posture, it's just a way of being, mm -hmm. right? Compassion. Mm. Loosen up the flow with creativity. Flowing rather than deadlines, goals. Oh, I hate that. I mean, it literally has a word dead in it, right? It's, I mean, the, 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 word, the word by itself is just indicative of... I know. Yeah. I'm always asking people, when, when is the next now that you need this book? <laughs> I love that. That's good. That's good reframe. And if it's like, you know, the next couple of weeks, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> not right? And I'm not like apologizing, I'm just being honest. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think I can deliver that. And yeah. the reaction is up to the person, what they're going to do with that information, right? Ooh, loose structure. Loose structure really helps with grounding presence. 
your new level of expression, your new level of service. If you can just like, have, I don't want people to get like tripped out in um, the new realm consciousness. It happens often, but I have to say there's like expansion and then, oh, now we're balanced enough, I can do some things. Yeah, there's a lot of like loose structure helps with moving things forward for sure. Mm. Right, action, loosening up the, the muse, the flow, allowing presence to produce miracles and direction. If you focus so intently on trying to manifest, you forget everything out here is gone. Because mm. you're just like, this thing, this thing, this thing, right? You can get obsessive that way. So if you allow yourself some loose structure and allow, give yourself permission for it to fail according to lower level uh, demands. So there's things that, that all of us have to deliver, rent, mm. taxes, you know, all those things. But if you allow it to degrade your light, mm -hmm. you're not feeling the, the thing that we're feeling and that we want to amplify. So if you just amplify laughing at your calendar or joyfully writing the check for rent or just freedom codes all over the place, it, you'll have a much easier time of this. Nature, Gaia, elementals, mm -hmm. kingdoms, have been, s it, for connection, ease, and grace, essential, well, right? I want to speak deeper into that. Yes, and we have to really be present with nature, not just what we're getting from it, what we're exchanging with it. And to root in, and, to, and, and the reminder and the relationship is to be rooted in with nature. We're remembering, we're flexing that muscle of that divine relationship that we have the privilege of having. And so it's not about, oh, I'm going to go hug a tree or go walk barefoot in the grass for a little bit and then come back and I've connected with nature. Because There's, I want something from it. Yeah, or I right? need to release not, something or... Or I love Gaia today and I'm going to be out for five minutes. Gaia yeah. wants help an me, intimacy. Me, there's, like, an, there's a connection with the intimacy yeah. that's getting deeper. We're going into mm -hmm. other realms of this beautiful planet that we're having a relationship with. And it's, yeah. there's a depth that we have access to that we're, we're being invited. I don't even think it's an invitation that we're merging with. Yeah, it's and that happening. loose structure, set up your day for success, mm -hmm. right? I'm not talking about go-getter stuff. Sun gaze, intention, my feet hit the ground. Sun gazing, Thank you. wow, yeah. Thank you, and mm -hmm. feeling it, not just saying it. So much gratitude. Gratitude is totally mm -hmm. transformational. Um, but yeah, stepping outside, you know, I'm an outdoor girl, but uh, you know, I get up very early, so it's like stars and mantras and all of that, but just, really set the quality of your, of your day and your experience, mm -hmm. and then whatever happens is okay, right? Know that uniqueness, your uniqueness has value. We're not going into unity consciousness to all become one thing. Mm -hmm. It is a, an expression of unique fractals of the creator beingness that if we amplify them, we are the constellation. We're that new constellation. All the stars light up and it's witnessed. Higher realms, higher light realms have seen like this jeweled uh. constellation emerging from Gaia. And I was like, well, what is it? They're human hearts. Wow. Just emanating a different frequency and they can see all the beautiful light emanations and everything. They're like, Gaia, it's not just Gaia, it's you. You know, it's You beautiful. saying that makes me so happy. Just need <laughs> right? truth bumps. Wow. Uh, but it's honored in the unity realms. So don't feel like you're going into unity consciousness to uh, constantly be in this state of oneness or whatever. There's a lot of unique expression. It yeah. always has the intention of service to the whole, but it's a beautiful, dazzling, unique you. That's why your heart is... Um, changes as you ascend, right? It starts, it starts uh, 
refracting light and kind of shining in a different way because now you're not in density, now you're in this higher thing. It's quite beautiful. Connect with others who are heart-based and capable. Uh-huh. Capable. Yes. <laughs> capable. Yes. It's lovely to hang out with people. And God bless everybody. And I'm neutral about everybody's path. But I have like, I have collectives. When I want to hang out and just be goofy, there's those people. When I want to hang out and I create service, there's those people. Uh-huh. You, brother, one of those mm, people. I'm just like, who's on board? Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of thing. And not in a weird go-getter kind of way, but like vibrationally, who's seeing what I am seeing and what are we going to do about it? Mm-hmm. So kind of connecting with people. You're going to have to learn how to communicate. I am getting a communication upgrade as we speak for the last week. I thought I wasn't going to be able to talk for the conversions. It was mm-hmm. kind of weird. I was like, what? Not a sore throat or anything. It was just recalibration. So the heart and the, and the voice and everything are, are unified. Let's just touch on a couple of the challenges, uh, the absurdity of doing. We were talking about uh-huh. earlier. Please Buddha laugh at the illusion as you level up. Um, and perhaps that is a little litmus test for mastery in your level of consciousness. If you're able to laugh at how weird it is to be in a body on a planet having this experience and walking around with the eyes of God looking through you going, this is really weird. (laughs) And I'm always, you know, uh, my teachings, I was always like source, witness this, feel this. That is such a divine practice. Source, witness this, feel this. Because I'm part of that. I'm not me. It's source is projecting all these different fractals. So I'm like, Pay attention to this right now. In this now moment, I am sitting with my dear friend in front of 90 beautiful souls, so aligned with divine service, and so have their hearts intended on expanding their creativity and their ability to lift and raise others that we've gathered in this now moment. Can you just feel this now moment right here and just look? through my eyes, beauty, grace, gratitude, uniqueness, infinite love, light, intelligence. Thank you, right, thank you. And I just kind of send it upstairs, you know, that kind of Mm. thing. Um, Yeah, so laughing at the illusion, uh, realizing you are source having an experience. Um, Are your goals outdated in the present state? kind of reflecting on the earlier questions a little bit. Um, acceleration and automation. Uh, I know there's a saturation of awakening products and services uh-huh. across the board. It's okay. Don't let it frighten your dream that you want to create yet another structured water tool and there's a bazillion out there already. Don't get intimidated by, oh, it's... Can I share, that? Can I share about that? Yes! Because when I created Please. the show, y'all, it's like there was other people that were doing the same format so well. And they knew the subject matter well, and they spoke so well. They're like, they're like and it's like, they're doing it really great. They've got big audiences. The speakers are amazing. It's like, why me? Mm. Why should I create this? Mm. Really, I mean, I sat with that for a long time. Um, and the kinds is because it's you. It's your voice, it's your expression. It's, you're going to share in a way that they're not qualified to share, but you are, and they're qualified to share in ways that you're not qualified. Mm. And it's about you, but it's not about you at the same time. Yeah. But still at the same time, it's like inviting this creation to go on the canvas and let it fall where it may. I didn't go out there, I have to have 100,000 followers and do all these other things. It's, I thought I was gonna do one or two seasons, y'all. I'm on season 33. <laughs> I thought I was gonna do maybe one year, it's 10 years. Uh, Jennifer, Darius, these other, all these other people with amazing platforms and it just kept thriving and it, it was, because of me, but it was also because I surrendered and because there was a resonant field 
for what wanted to come in, the magnetics mm -hmm. were beyond the belief of my limitations and really a maturity of the expansion that I was growing into. And we have to allow for that within ourselves, remember that if we're called to it, um, how wonderful the question. Yeah. Because the question also helps us to land in our truth and in the innocence. And to allow creation. yourself to, to step away when you're like, hmm, maybe this needs to change. No. Right? Like, don't be intimidated by putting yourself out there, of course. We've been talking about that for a long time. Um, and don't, you know, let the saturation of ascension and awakening uh, intel um, frighten you out of sharing your own heart. Mm -hmm. But also, like, honor, like, I haven't been on YouTube like YouTube is the thing. Everybody watches video, you know. I I write, so I'm like, well, this is what I feel like doing right now. So I'm going to honor that, and you know, let the cards fall where they may as far as you're stepping head, away from. You're the video head of the work. curve, though, because the trends I'll are coming back. back to writing. Just like, it's just it just is, yeah. I don't know. Everyone's like, I haven't heard from you in years. I was like, what? Your YouTube. I was like, oh. That. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, okay. You know, but but again, put it into the field. There are people discovering my videos from, you know, 2011 or whatever. They're like, oh, that's exactly where I am. You know, so just lay yeah. out the journey where you are, and the you know it calls people into the field. Another challenge is external energies or events, distractions, revelations, mm. right? all your energy and focus can get sucked into the latest announcement, the latest revelation, the latest decompression, dismantling, oh, yeah. uh, whatever. Um, you really have to manage your consciousness during this, this rapid fire it's gonna be revelations. A lot of it. There's gonna be a lot more of it coming up. So it, it's so quick you forget mm -hmm. what was revealed the day before. Yeah. You know, you're just like, oh, another big thing and another big but thing. React, our nervous, nervous system's system. reacting to it. It's like, stay in your lane. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? I, I, you know, I set a timer for a while because I was like, all right, five, five minutes social media check in, go. Mm -hmm. Just to scan, check in with everybody, make sure all my friends are okay. Nobody's asking questions that need to be answered or whatever like that. And it kind of trained me to get in and get out. You know, I mm -hmm. share a lot of content, but it's all, I use automation tools to put it out there. And then I just have to check in, you know, a couple minutes, answer questions, beautiful, encourage everybody, and then step away too. Um, Cause that external thing, I don't want to be consuming so much external influence uh, during this time, especially. Um, exhaustion has been, a challenge for everyone. Yeah. You are not alone mm -hmm. in feeling tired and wired, weepy and sleepy, flattened. It's it's been kind of on overdrive lately. Like on a, you feel exhausted, on, like your soul is exhausted. You know that kind of thing. It's just the body going through transformation and a much in, more intense light trying to integrate itself into your system. So go lay on the dirt, you know, just al allow mm -hmm. that time to, uh, to just be tired and not be like, and not try to push yourself through things. I mean, we all have things to do and yeah, sometimes it's pushing to deliver. However, uh, the exhaustion will, will cause dis-ease in the body if you just kind of like, brush it away with stimulants or pushing through or whatever. There's no pushing through any longer. Mm -hmm. Presence is very... Um, mm. uh, and, and another challenge is uh, if you are feeling disheartened about where you are in your process or your service, just realize that giving up on your dreams depletes vital life force and affects us all. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling like you're degrading the quality of your own light. We are in unity consciousness. Whether a soul is aware of it or not, whether a being is aware of it or not, unity consciousness is now dominating these realities. Mm -hmm. It's telling us to do something else. So when you 
when you feel like, oh, I just don't know what to do or whatever, like, please transmute that with creativity or take a walk around the block or go lay in a hammock or hug a tree or something because um, adding your positive light and, and just your desire to feel or even just to try, just try, right? Because it does, we consider the whole as we walk through these. Um, Trying something is great also in yeah, um, love. body movement. Move. So important, movement, Huge. dance, move your body. The Qigong, it's just, it's amazing. And it's, it's a working of our plasmic energy. Again, our, our fascia wants to expand and support everything else. So it's mm. dance and move, dance and move. Yeah. Yeah. It does help. I remember Carly and I used to cross paths all the time when she lived in my neighborhood. Out for a walk, got to move, mm -hmm. got to move again. Yep, just keep moving. Um, just a, a couple of practices. Feel your new narrative if you're creating that. Mm. If you're feeling like the presence has a different story, has a different narrative, a different trajectory, just kind of feel that and start creating the conditions for that experience. You do have to change. Qualify the light that you emanate with the crystalline frequency. It helps. Heart presence, mastery, uh, holding that Christ field for support, ease, grace, miracles. Does actually work. I am witness. Uh, be present with the discomfort of change. We say ease and grace. We set forth ease and grace because we want it to go as smoothly as possible. That doesn't mean it always goes as smoothly as possible, mm. right? But if you can get a little more comfortable with being uncomfortable uh, or, or going into the unknown, mm. really being present with yourself, it's okay to not know, right? Mm. And even if you see other people who are like, I know what's the truth, wow. Like, shh, right? <laughs> Not telling them, shh, just tell your own. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's just rude, and you want to be kind, right? Just feel your own heart, shh, hold mm -hmm. on. I am no longer influenced by, by the past mm -hmm. that had worthiness or creator issues or anything like that. And just get, getting, um, just even just doing this, a lot of my practice is shh. Let's just be comfortable with how uncomfortable I am mm. delivering a crystalline convergence as I'm going through rapid changes in my presence. Yeah. As I'm feeling like I'm upstairs all the time. All the worries that come with, am I going to be able to talk, deliver, whatever? And then you're here, you're like, wow, I'm really comfortable with this being so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. it's like lower self discomfort, but it's still like, okay, I think I've got this. And if you can keep doing that consistently, my body hurts. I'm okay with that. You know, just not degrading mm -hmm. the light really helps. Moving forward, taking actions small or large that reflect your higher beingness, your dream, cosmic perspective on your service, and then connecting in your meditations with future, ascended, already doing it, because every time you have a thought form, it gets created somewhere, right? It may not last, because there's, if you don't put energy into it, but every time you have an idea that's like whew, fueled with unity and excitement and joy, you literally set a path of light for that to be created. Now you can you know, let it dissolve, you know, that and, and not be upset about the fact that it didn't happen. But if you can keep connecting with that you that's already doing it and then take away the distance between what I'm experiencing now and the, the presence that's experiencing that in the so-called later and just kind of like merge the two, there's something that happens there And if, if you can just kind of feel, again, starting with the feeling state, what are you playing with? How are you serving? Who am I serving? Who am I working with? And not serving like, 
I am going to bestow wisdom upon you. You know, mm -hmm. that's not service. It's uh, a true emanation. <laughs> I know it's funny. <laughs> Thank you for laughing, sister. It's, uh, it's this emanation that, that comes through us. So if we can kind of tap into how does, where is presence taking me right now? I've been doing a lot of, you know, kind of grounded work on uh, meditation and talking things over with guides and Gaia and everybody, you know, just kind of going, where are we going with this? Not that it matters. I'm enjoying this vital weirdness that is this transformation. And I'm kind of enjoying uh, the unknown, hmm. right? Not knowing wh where it's going, what is it going to do to me? Am I going to drop the body, not drop the body? You know, all hmm. these things come up. You know, don't, don't furrow your brow. It's not <laughs> sad. <laughs> it is what it is. I will yeah. always be working on ascension, in form or out. But, um, you know, it is what it is. But if you kind of um, meditate on that and just kind of feel not a trajected, uh, projected self, but the thing that's happening in, in all the realms, across the realms, you'll start to feel it if you meditate with that. Wow. How about that? Yeah. How about that for a Saturday? That was it, fun. It, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Oh, woo. It's, you, you speak of these as their suggestions, but I'd like to invite that it's more like a manual, more like a roadmap of experience. And then mm. this is really, you can do this and you can do, oh, well, it's a suggestion. Maybe I'll do that. It's like, no, it's like, really walk in the footsteps of someone who's walked it already and and feel the joy and the amplitude in your heart if it's aligned with you. Um, yeah, and stop putting so much weight on final decisions. Have to, have to figure this out. I have to figure that out. Remember all, this, all the talk about water? What it, it says, so it yeah. is, so it is. The field, Christ field says, so it is over and over again. And if you can be present with it being strange and unknown, sharing with people, even just starting there, if you have not communicated with anybody and you're afraid to put yourself online or whatever, just start sharing your journey. Mm -hmm. You don't have to reteach what's already been taught. But there's, there's something to be said for this moment being so powerful, we always talk about the now moment being so powerful. So really honor your own journey, mm -hmm. but it is the time to, even if you have to tuck yourself in the cave every once in a while for an hour or two, it's not the time for like retreating from the acceleration. Mm -hmm. I know it can feel intimidating. So much information, so much revelation. You're gonna find something very unique if you treat yourself with patience, but also talk about the journey. Mm -hmm. Talk about the journey. Even if you just start there, I don't know what I'm doing, but here's my first blog. Yeah. Even if you just start there, people have wild success with doing that. And if you're on huge platforms and, ex and having experiences and sharing with people, make sure that you are continuing to expand. We want to get into this state of expansive creativity. So if you're feeling like you're looping or stagnating, you know, just make some leaps of faith. And also if we're feeling the contraction, if you're feeling contraction, you know, invite some of that because that could be the precipice of this huge expansion that's happening also. So don't be afraid of the contraction yeah. necessarily, just be aware. Feel it, right? Yeah. Feel it like, hmm. I recognize, <laughs> yeah. I recognize this and it needs to be something else, but I'm not gonna judge it. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna get myself out of there with a walk, camp, sleep under the stars, draw something, paint something, write something, sing something, dance something. Or you know, express my truth. Yeah, just, yeah. even with this, if it's just with a close friend, you need to practice, practice, practice opening your communication, practice your mm -hmm. creativity. It's, you get more. The, the flow is there. The juice flows in the direction of that action. So please, uh, gosh, infinite blessings on all of us and our, our new creations. I would like to 
ground everything that was experienced today and everything that was shared and all of the insights and downloads and expansiveness that may have flowed in for you and knowing that everything that you do is on behalf of the whole so the more that we level up and the brighter we become the brighter we all shine holding the intention of infinite love light intelligence in our hearts all of our beingness and as one Let's take a breath in tone, take a breath. Ah. Ah. Again, take a breath. Ah. 